Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and welcome to a Valentine's Day inspired reading vlog. I am going to be reading two romance novels throughout this reading vlog and tell you a lot about them, but before we get into that, I wanted to do a little haul from my trip to Pennsylvania that you just previously saw. I didn't get a lot on my trip to Pennsylvania. It was a very quick weekend trip that was such a nice getaway to just explore a new town and just kind of not look at my phone for the weekend. And I got one really cool thing that I wanted to show you. And it is a photograph of them filming the MGM opening credits in Hollywood. So this is the iconic lion that you see before every MGM movie and I got this because I have been obsessed with lions since the beginning of my life. I have always been in love with them. They are always just an animal that I've gravitated towards and I'm also a Leo so I feel like this really fits into a lot of things that I'm interested in. We have lions, we have the fact that I'm a Leo, we have old Hollywood and I do have an old Hollywood wall collage above my bed that I have been trying to fill up and there is a perfect spot that this print can fit into and I just had to get my hands on it because I was going through all the different photographic prints that they had at the store and they had a lot of historical ones especially old Hollywood ones and once I came across this one I knew I had to get it and I also have another old Hollywood little thing to haul for you all and it is the films of Marlene Dietrich I have never seen a Marlene Dietrich film but I was recently reading up about her because she kind of created this Dietrich lighting where the lighting is just face on onto her and it creates this very beautiful effect which creates shadows across her cheekbones and she is very famous for her beautiful lighting and films. So my mom got me this because she knew I loved old Hollywood and this is the perfect thing that I can add to my growing movie collection where I have a lot of screenplays and I'm slowly but surely collecting textbooks and novels about movies and how they are created. I have a lot more things to haul for you so I hope you enjoy the fact that this is not only a reading vlog but a haul because I love those types of videos and this video is actually being sponsored by Redbubble. I have worked with Redbubble in the past and I love them so much. They are truly my go-to place to get gifts for friends because my friends have very specific interests that you can't really find in a store. So I go to Redbubble and I search up their interests and you can get designs from independent artists and put it on pouches, socks, t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, so many different things. There are thousands upon thousands of designs on Red Bull Bowl that can fit your interests or fit your loved one's interests. So this time I am working with Red Bubble to give gifts to my loved ones in honor of Valentine's Day. So I have a lot of gifts for friends and a couple of gifts for myself that I wanted to show you to get you inspired if you are looking for things to gift to people during the holiday season, whether it be Valentine's Day, Christmas, their birthday. So the one thing that I want to show you is something that I already wore because I'm obsessed with it and it's these candy heart socks. They definitely remind me of Valentine's Day and once I saw this design I knew I had to have it on a sock. Another pair of socks that I got was actually for my mother and it is a coffee inspired pair of socks. My mom loves coffee more than I do so I knew I wanted to get her a pair of socks because she also really likes wearing socks with wacky designs so I knew that this pair would be perfect for her. So for my friend Jessica, I got her two tote bags. One is a beautiful kind of modern face print type of tote bag and, and I think this will really suit her. And then I got her a tote bag that says have a nice day in a very cute little print. So I cannot wait to give it to her the next time I see her in person because I can mail it to her but I want to see like her reaction so I want to give it to her in person because I love that part of gift giving. Another tote bag that I got for my friend Sarah is a moon tote bag. It is a picture of a moon and kind of like the shadow of the moon hugging each other and I got this for her because not only does she love the moon as much as I do but it also reminds me of Summer Camp Island because in Summer Camp Island every single thing in the world is alive especially the moon. So this gave me Summer Camp Island vibes because that is our favorite show to watch together and I think this is the cutest tote bag. For my friend Camille, I got her a plant-inspired phone case. My friend Camille is the queen of plants 
plans. She has like over a hundred plans in her house. Like if you thought I had a lot of plans in my house, she has triple the amount of plans. So I asked her what she wanted from Redbubble as well and she told me that she was looking for a phone case. So I searched up some plant designs for her and I got her this phone case and I know she's going to love it. As always, I got some postcards from Redbubble. So we have a planned one that says we are soil mates. I got an Evelyn Hugo Valentine's Day inspired postcard to add to my art collage which I have right here. Then I got a Valentine's Day postcard and a book postcard to send to my pen pal Leah. And is it truly a red bubble haul if I don't get some stickers? I got one that says it's a good day to ride for my mother. Of course I had to get myself a sticker that says give me space. And then I got a sticker that reminds me so much of one of my best friends. They just look so much like this sticker. And then I got myself a bookshelf sticker that I cannot wait to put on my journal. Another print that I got for my old Hollywood wall collage from Redbubble is a print of Paris. This is a black and white metallic print that has a nice sheen to it. It reminds me of the flashback scenes to Casablanca and I think that it'll fit my aesthetic really well because it's also black and white and once I saw this design I knew I had to add it to my collection because it's so classic and beautiful and I just love how it feels like watercolors. And the last two things that I got are for my friend Marg. I got them two shirts so one is an anime inspired shirt with a cat and two people riding it and my friend loves anime and they also have a cat so I wanted to get them something that really matches their interests and along with that design that I showed them I showed them this other one and they really seem to enjoy it because it is just so quirky and cute and I just wanted to surprise them with it and it is a shirt that says magic hat on it I think it's going to match my friend Marg's personality really well and I really hope that they enjoy those two shirts that I got for them. I am just so happy with my Red Bubble haul along with the fact that I can give all these gifts to my friends. I cannot wait to see their reactions. So if you want to check out any of the designs or the items that I got from Red Bubble, I will have a link down below that you can click on and you can see every single thing that I got from my Red Bubble haul this time around. And you can use my coupon code which will be featured right here and in my description to get 15% off your next Red Bubble order. So thank you so much to Red Bubble for sponsoring this Valentine's Day themed reading vlog and haul and let's get into what I am currently reading. So I am currently reading two things, one on audiobook and one physically. So let's talk about the audiobook first because it's right next to me and I don't know where my, oh, my book is all the way over there. So the book that I'm currently listening to on audiobook is The Holiday Switch by Tiff Marcello. The Holiday Switch is a Christmas YA contemporary. Yes, I'm reading a Christmas book in February but honestly I'm the type of person who loves Christmas so like I have the Christmas spirit all year round. It does not matter that it is February. I am going to read this Christmas story this month. Judge me if you will. So according to Goodreads, it says it is a romance about a Filipino-American girl who crosses path with the innkeeper's aggravating nephew. But when they accidentally switch phones, their newly discovered secrets draw them together. So I think this is like a rivals to lovers romance and I am so excited for it. I am only 11% through it, so I've only briefly met the love interest, but they haven't really interacted, but I feel like they are in a couple of chapters. But I'm excited to find out what her her rival secret is and how they both find each other's phones and find out each other's secrets and it kind of creates some tension there. So I am really enjoying this YA romance so far. It is cute, it is Christmassy, it is just cozy and wonderful and I'm usually not the biggest fan of YA romance because I feel like I've grown out of it but this one is just very cute and soft and lighthearted and I feel like I'm really going to enjoy it. So let me get the book that I am currently physically reading. The book that I am physically reading is this Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. This is a book that is so popular on book talk, on Instagram, and even book Twitter. So the Spanish love deception follows our main character, Catalina, who needs a date to her sister's wedding in Spain for the weekend. And her rival co-worker, Erin, decides to graciously volunteer for that position as her date. And she is very confused by that because they are not friends at their workplace. So why would he volunteer to be her date? And to make matters worse, Catalina spilled the beans to her mother and lied and said that Erin is her boyfriend 
boyfriend. So not only does he have to become her date to her sister's wedding, but he also has to pretend to be her boyfriend. I am only 120 pages into this story so far. It is almost 500 pages long, so this is a very long romance, and I know a lot of people say that it is a slow burn, that it really takes its time, and I really enjoy that about romance. There's not a lot that happened within the first 120 pages, and in my notes I said that they had really cute banter, and the main character loves to mention that Aaron is just so tall. He's just so big. He's like Henry Cavill, and she mentions it nearly every single page. So that's kind of annoying, but I feel like I can like let that go and continue reading this story. It's not enough for me to DNF, but that is something that I wanted to mention because it's nearly every single page that she mentions how big Aaron is. And I'm like, okay, we get it. We get it. He's a tall man. You're 5'2 or 5'3 everyone's going to look big next to you. <laughs> I'm excited to see what's going to happen next because everyone seems to love it and I really want to love it as well too. And I hope that she stops mentioning that Aaron is so big and tall and strong and just so, he takes up so much room in every room. Oh my God. I just made a mess doing this entire haul for this video. So now I'm going to listen to the holiday switch while I clean up my room and then I have to rush out of my house to go see my friends. We are reaching the end of this vlog and I finished the Spanish love deception finally. This is such a big romance. It is almost 500 pages long and I had so much fun with it. Yes, the first 120 pages could have been heavily edited down because I feel like it did drag out, but once I hit that 120 page mark, I fell absolutely in love with this story. I really enjoyed it because I loved the dynamic between Aaron and Catalina. I thought their romance was just so healthy and such a beautiful slow burn where I didn't feel frustrated, but I just enjoyed every single moment, every single touch that they had, and I just was so happy for them. And I especially loved the fact that Aaron was just such a sweet, soft, and gentle love interest. He really took Catalina's worries and anxieties to heart. He wanted to provide her comfort and was just such a warm love interest. I loved how he was aloof to the world and very grumpy, but when he was around Catalina, he just kind of came to life and became this really happy, and just soft person that I just cannot stop gushing about. And I also really enjoyed Catalina because I saw a lot of myself in her. She was very unsure. She didn't know what she wanted in life and she was still healing from her past. And I just thought that their dynamic was beautiful. Now onto a couple of things that I didn't necessarily enjoy about this romance. One was the fact that it was very slow to get into. Two, the fact that she always mentioned that Aaron was so big, so large. He was like bigger than than the chair he sat in. I feel like that could have been heavily edited down. I feel like we could have taken out those moments because there were far too many instances where she mentioned how large he was and it was very tiring. And I do wish that we had a little bit more of a personality with the side characters. I wish we 
learned more about her sister. I wish we learned more about her parents because there were scenes with them, but I feel like we didn't truly know them as characters, especially when this novel was centered around her sister's wedding. I feel like it should have been a bigger deal because the wedding was a very short part of this book and I wish it was kind of dragged out. I wish there was more that happened at the wedding. I wish there was more scenes between Catalina and her sister and I just wish that there was more of a connection because I feel like we definitely focused on Aaron mostly for this novel and I do enjoy that but I also really do appreciate the interactions that our main character has with side characters and romances because it doesn't have to be too frequent but I do wish that we had more instances where we spoke to the sister and we got to know her a little bit better because I didn't feel like I knew her or her husband that she was getting married to. But other than that, I greatly enjoyed this romance. It had everything I wanted and more. Let me read out to you the tropes that it had. It had the fake dating trope, it was a slow burn, rivals to lovers, and had the only one bed scenario. Those are some of my favorite things in romances and I feel like Elena just knew what readers wanted in a romance and put it together into this beautiful novel and I also know that she is coming out with the American Roommate Experiment soon and I am very excited about that because that follows the best friend of Catalina and I am very excited to learn more about her because she was just very funny and cute and I want to learn more about her and her love interest and I'm just I'm so excited for that but I think if you were looking for something soft and simple that will put a smile onto your face and make you fall in love with a beautiful romance, then I think you would greatly enjoy the Spanish love deception. And let me tell you a little bit more about my audiobook that I was also currently reading, and it is The Holiday Switch. I am 63% through that audiobook, and I'm also greatly enjoying it. I didn't know if I was going to love this YA romance because YA romances are a pretty big hit or miss for me, but I am enjoying it so much. It's not too Christmassy so I think if you want to read it but you don't want to read it not around Christmas time, I think it's just cute. It's wintry. It has a very cozy feel to it and I don't think I'm going to finish it for this vlog but I did want to tell you that I'm enjoying it and I just love how soft and cute that romance is because I feel like these have some pretty high stakes because these two main characters are co-workers and that can lead to a lot of issues but in the YA romance it is just soft. It is cute. It's a low stakes and that's exactly what I needed to get out of my audiobook book slump that I was currently in. Nothing was really holding my attention but I feel like the holiday switch really holds my attention. It gives me a lot of happiness and I cannot wait to finish it and potentially speak about it in a books and brews video in the future. They both had the rivals to lovers trope which I really appreciated because I really love that trope so much in romances and that was just pure coincidence. I did not plan that at all but I'm just so happy that I was able to read two wonderful romances. One I still have to finish but they are both so good and I cannot wait to finish the holiday switch because I know it's going to wrap up nicely because if I'm already enjoying the first 63% of it I'm sure I'm going to enjoy the last 40 something percent of it. 40 something or is it 37? I think it's 37. I don't know. I don't do math. Thank you so much for watching this reading vlog. If you have a specific trope or genre that you want me to read in a future reading vlog, I would love to hear your thoughts down below. And if you want to check out Redbubble to check out my Valentine's Day inspired haul, or if you want to get anything for yourself or for loved ones, be sure to use the link in my bio and use my coupon code, which will be featured right here, which is good until June 30th, 2022 to get 15% off your order. So thank you so much to Redbubble for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for sticking around towards the end of this video. If you want to connect with me anywhere else, you all know my social media links are linked down below and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!